Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're doing a graphics card showdown featuring this Gigabyte RX 550. I think it's like the D5 model or something. I don't know. It's really hard. Gigabyte, sort out your naming scheme because it's so confusing. Um, and that's going to be going up against this guy, the Asus Phoenix GTX 1050. So you'll notice that both of these cards are single fan designs. These are both supposed to be very, very cheap models of these already cheap cards. So let's get into it and uh, talk about the GPUs themselves. So, in the RX 550, you get the 14 nanometer Polaris 12 Lexa Pro GPU, and in the GTX 1050, you get the 14 nanometer Pascal GP107 GPU. That means you get 512 stream processors over on the RX 550, and 640 CUDA cores on the GTX 1050, so slight advantage there for the 1050. Speeds wise, getting 1183 megahertz on this RX 550 model, as opposed to the 1746 megahertz I saw out of the Phoenix GTX 1050. So that's a huge advantage in clock speed there for the GTX 1050. Now, TDP wise, uh, RX 550 is going with a 50 watt TDP as opposed to the 75 watt TDP of the uh, 1050. So that's a bit of a win there for the RX 550, although it doesn't really count for much. And memory wise, they both have the same memory 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 on a 128 bit bus at 7000 megahertz. So let's talk about the coolers then. And there's not much to talk about, so it'll be very, very brief. Both of them single fan design. Uh, this looks like a 90mm fan, unless I'm mistaken, on the RX 550. Uh, they both have a very basic aluminium looking like uh, heat sink underneath them, so yeah, there's not really much to say here. Although the uh, RX 550, the cool looks bigger, the um, 1050 actually has the chunkier heat sink on it. So that will probably give it the advantage in terms of cooling. But yeah, both of these cards are very, very basic in their design and very, very basic in their coolers. Although these GPUs are not running very hot at all. So they don't really need to be that beefy. So with all that being said, let's jump to the benchmarks in and see how these cards perform. So of course, it wouldn't be fair to do my usual suite of benchmarks because a lot of those games are new AAA titles and they'll be a bit beyond these GPUs, at least on their highest preset. So I did some older games, and then I did some esports games. So I did Rocket League, which is a game I really enjoy playing, um, and that's a game that I think a lot of people that own cards like this may be playing, and also Overwatch. Now, Overwatch was done on its Ultra preset, not the Epic, because I don't really see any need to do the Epic preset. The Ultra uh, preset is still good enough. And all these tests were done at 1080p, because these cards are definitely not meant to be used for any gaming beyond 1080p. So let's jump into it and see how they perform. So that's a huge win for the GTX 1050. It almost doubles the FPS of the RX 550 in some of those benchmarks. So a huge, huge win here for the GTX 1050. Honestly, 
I am massively disappointed in the performance of the RX 550. I expected so much more. That is just thoroughly disappointing, to tell you the truth. And it's not even me being ridiculous because I run high-end equipment. Um, I know what it's like to run these sort of entry-level um, graphics cards or the value-for-money tier cards, and that, that's just not good enough. It's just not pure and simple. It's just not good enough performance for uh, an entry-level graphics card. The GTX 1050, on the other hand, that is very solid performance for an entry-level graphics card, so it's a big win there. Let's move over to temperatures and see how these guys did. So obviously these GPUs won't be running very hot, although the coolers on them are very small. So for this, I did the Unigen Valley benchmark on the Extreme HD preset. I recorded the highest temperature and the highest fan speed I saw out of both of these graphics cards. So the RX 550 here went to 70 degrees Celsius at 39% fan speed, and the GTX 1050 went to 63 degrees Celsius at 31% fan speed. So seven degrees, less on the GTX 1050 and also at a lower fan speed. So once again, another win here for the GTX 1050. You know, nothing else to be said here. It's a very good job. It, it does have a chunkier heat sink on there, so I think that's probably um, gonna cause it, although the fan is uh, quite a bit smaller than the one on the RX 550, but still quite interesting. Moving on now to noise, and both of these cards were actually very, very good. Now you may think they may be noisy, because they only have a single fan, but that's not the case. Um, they're very, very good in terms of noise. At idle, you won't hear anything. Even on load when you're playing games, you won't hear anything. But as always, I'll let you guys judge for yourselves. So this was taken uh, during the Unigen Valley benchmark on the Extreme HD preset. I'll show you what the RX 550 sounds like first, and then we'll jump over to the GTX 1050. So there you have it. Neither of these cards are loud, so that's not really going to be a problem. And yeah, I don't think anybody would be complaining with uh, these graphics cards. As I said earlier, they are cool running GPUs, and those fan speeds are very, very low. So whether you're just doing basic things, browsing the web, or you're playing games, or anything like that, or watching uh, videos, there's going to be no noise coming out of either of these graphics cards. Which brings us now to the conclusion, and what do I make of these two graphics cards? The RX 550 from Gigabyte? and the ASUS Phoenix GTX 1050. So we have to bring price into the equation. And the RX 550 is cheaper, so at Playtech right now in New Zealand, you can pick up this RX 550 for 175 New Zealand dollars. The Phoenix GTX 1050 on the other hand will set you back a little bit more, 219 New Zealand dollars, so it's $44 more expensive. Now I would say in a heartbeat, in a New York minute, that the GTX 1050 is much better value. I would pay that $44 to double my FPS any day of the week. So the GTX 1050 is the better one to go for here and it is the winner of the showdown. There's no way I can recommend the RX 550. This is what I've told you guys quite a few times. You don't always want to go for the cheapest graphics card you can because sometimes you can spend a little bit more, in this case, just save up that little bit extra more money and buy the GTX 1050, and you'll get a much better graphics card out of it. And even at Playtech right now, there's some GTX 1050s on special for cheaper than the RX 550. So where you live, you may just have to wait till you see a 1050 go on special, and it'll probably be less than the RX 550, and you're getting a much better graphics card out of it. So yeah, that's what I would have to say. The RX 550 is a big disappointment to me anyways, and I would definitely go for the GTX 1050 over the RX 550. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, and comment down below letting me know what you think of this showdown, which one of these cards would you pick and why. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.